This video illustrates a proof using our new derived rules. But before we construct that proof, I'd like to call attention to this thing I call the useful chart that shows up in a couple of different places in the course packet. The useful chart is a complete summary of our proof method if you know how to read it. As we know, when you're doing proofs, you want to work top down first and basically you look at the main connective of the formula and then you use the appropriate rule. Then when you're stuck at the top, you go bottom up and once again the main connective tells you what you ought to do. In some ways I'd like to say we're more familiar with the bottom up material than we are with the top down because we've just added a bunch of new top down things, primarily the derived rules. So for instance, if you're working the bottom if you're stuck at the top and you go to the bottom and you see an ampersand, you know you do two lines for an ampersand. Or if you do the double arrow, it's two lines for the double arrow. So there's always one unique thing to do bottom up based on the main connective. Now, some of the top-down stuff is equally obvious. If you see an ampersand as the main connective, clearly you want to do ampersand out, and if it's a double arrow, you do double arrow out. The truth is the tilde is now almost as good as the ampersand of the double arrow because if you see the tilde as the main connective then you know you're doing either De Morgan's or arrow exchange depending on what you have on the inside. I'm using the dollar sign here as a wild card. If it's a wedge, an ampersand, or an arrow, well, you have something immediately to do. The truth is I think all the hardest stuff at this point happens right here. It's when you have an arrow or a wedge as the main connective and you have to think about arrow out modus tollens or disjunctive argument or wedge out and sometimes in order to use these rules you have to be creative and you have to build say the antecedent or the negation of the consequent or you have to build half of a disjunction. These are things which you have to learn to do with time. For the moment, I'm going to take this part of the information. If you've got the arrow as the main connective, or if you've got the wedge as the main connective, and I'm going to write the relevant information here. If it's an arrow, two rules. Arrow out, modus tollens. If it's a wedge, use DA or wedge out. Okay, let's uh, get rid of the useful chart now and instead we'll put a proof in its place. Come on proof, there we go. Here is an argument, three premises and the conclusion and I'll put it down at the bottom and this is going to make use of pretty much all our new derived rules. So let's get started. Okay. So we start at the top, and I immediately notice that the main connective on line one is a tilde. Hip, hip, hooray. Yeah, really, whenever the tilde is the main connective, that's going to be good news. Well, the main connective inside is an arrow, so in this particular case, I'm using arrow exchange. I immediately get to add another line, and we see that the arrow turns into an ampersand. Okay. What happens to P? Well, according to the rule, nothing happens to P. So all we're going to do is just write the P part, which is R, on a line by itself. And then the S, notice Q is just a placeholder for whatever comes after the arrow but before the parentheses. So the Q part is tilde S. And the rule says you have to add a tilde to Q so that's why we get tilde tilde s. And the justification over here will be one arrow exchange. Of course, just you can tell that it only needs one line of justification because there's only one line that turns into something else. From a single line, you get to make progress. Well, I can now check off line one. And notice the payoff for this is that we've now got an ampersand and so even before I think about anything else it makes sense to me just to go ahead and break this up. 
R and tilde tilde S four ampersand out. Now you might look at these two tildes in front of the S and say, oh, double negation, I should do that as well. It would be perfectly acceptable to do that. I'm usually not in a hurry to drop off two tildes. If I need to drop them off later, I'll certainly do that. Quite often, they will be needed. While I'm not in a hurry to drop two tildes off of a single letter, when I look up at line two, as I'm working down, I see that I have two tildes outside parentheses. Well, that's definitely something that we should just automatically get rid of. And when we drop those two tildes, we can also drop the parentheses, and we get just T -R -O W, and that's going to be two double negation. Double negation lets us drop or add two tildes whenever we need to, and when you have two tildes outside parentheses, it's good to get rid of them. So, single tilde outside parentheses do De Morgan's Rarer Exchange. Two tildes do double negation and get rid of them. All right, we're working our way down. Now we're looking at line three. Single tilde, outside parentheses. Okay, so once again, it's De Morgan or Arrow Exchange. The wedge is the main connective inside. That means we're doing the first version of De Morgan's. Well, when I'm doing De Morgan's, I always like to remind myself that you're supposed to switch the connective. So wedge to ampersand. Wedge to ampersand, or ampersand to wedge. And then distribute the tilde. Basically, it just means add a tilde to both halves. Well, Y and S is the P part, so I'm going to end up with tilde Y and S. Added a tilde to P. Now I have to add a tilde to Q, so clearly that's tilde W. And that will be three De Morgans. Thank you, Augustus De Morgan, pioneer of uh, propositional logic. So we'll check off line three. Notice that this too produced an ampersand. The first version of De Morgan's and Arrow Exchange both produce ampersands, so yes, let's definitely jump in and break this up. And when we do, we get tilde Y ampersand S and tilde W. Eight ampersand out done twice. Of course, notice what has just shown up. Line 9 has a tilde as its main connective, and so we can do one more De Morgan's. Switch the connective, ampersand to wedge, and add a tilde to both sides. So now we have tilde Y, wedge, tilde S. Come on, that's a tilde. You're not doing your tilde thing. Okay, uh, that was 9 DM. Well, at this point, I've worked on a number of things, and I got a little bit sloppy about checking stuff off. Whenever it's not immediately clear what to do next, go back and read off all the lines you've worked on and check them off. That just helps you focus. So 1 and 4, I uh, didn't check off 4 there. 2 and 3, got both of those, 8 and 9. All right, so that means my attention really ought to go to these others. Uh, 5 is uninteresting, 6, yeah, that's basically just S, 7. Well, here I now have an arrow as the main connective. That's where I've said all the real work is. When an arrow is the main connective, you have to think about arrow out and modus tollens. Okay, well, for arrow out, I would say to myself, if I can find T on another line by itself, then I can write W. And I take a look, yeah, I don't have a T. I couldn't do arrow out. So now I need to think about modus tollens. To do modus tollens, you have to have the negation of the Q part. If you're a porcupine, then you have quills. If you don't have quills, then you're not a porcupine. So when I look at T or W, I think to myself, what would the negation of Q be? Well, of course, it would just be tilde W in this case. And now I go look and say, do I have tilde W? And I find it right here. Ah, so if T, then W. Not W, therefore not T.
Notice you add a tilde to the P when you do modus tollens. Like arrow out, this is a two-line rule, and so we will have to cite both lines 7 and 10 in the justification. So it'll be 7 comma 10 and the name of the rule, modus tollens. Okay, that all seemed easy. Now line 11. It says tilde Y wedge tilde S. Here we have the wedge as the main connective, and that means we have to think about disjunctive argument or wedge out. Now wedge out is our basic rule, but the truth is I would always think about DA first because it's easier. Wedge out was that rather ugly rule that has three lines. It says if you have P wedge Q, you have to find P arrow R and Q arrow R, and if you have find all that, you get R. Well, unfortunately, you can't forget about wedge out, but you're going to use DA much more often. The DA rule is the most intuitive of all of our proof rules, I think. This says, I'm either going to make pi or quiche. Yeah, I'm not going to make pi, therefore, I'll make quiche. I'm going to make pi or quiche. Well, if I'm not going to make quiche, then I'm going to make pi. Whenever you see a wedge as the main connective, you should say to yourself, at least one half has to be true. Now, I should be very careful in this case because notice we have these extra tildes, and I know that that throws people. A great thing to do would be to circle the P part and put a square around the Q part. If the wedge is the main connective, well, everything in front of it is P, everything after it is Q. The rule says if we're going to make progress, we have to have either tilde P or tilde Q. Well, just looking at line 11 will tell you what you need to go look for. You either have to find tilde tilde Y, and I'll take a look and I say, yeah, I don't have tilde tilde Y, or you have to find tilde tilde S. You have to have one more tilde than the piece that you're working on. Do I have tilde tilde S? And yes, I definitely do. Notice, why do I have to have tilde S? If I put in the box for Q, you can really see that this says either circle or square has to be true. It's not the square. This tilde basically says cross off the square. So it's not the square part. Ah, so it has to be the circle part and the circle part itself was tilde y. Of course, we're using p's and q's over here instead of circles and squares, but basically it's the same thing. This says either p or q has to be true. Up here it says it's not q. Well, so it has to be the p part. This also is a two-line rule, therefore we have to cite both line 6 and 11 for the justification. It's 6, 11, and D, A. All right, we can check off those. If we look now, we've checked off everything that was interesting, but we always have to have one eye on the conclusion. And notice what it is, tilde Y and tilde T, and we have that with two tildes in front. I hope you're seeing how to do this. All we're going to do is put together tilde Y ampersand tilde t, and we do this by 12, 13 ampersand in, and we have our cool double negation rule that allows us to add or delete two tildes at any point. At this point, we obviously want to add two tildes, and so this will be 14 double negation. Fun! Alright, any questions? I hope not, because I can't hear you. <laughs>